Hello everybody, glad to see you. Today I'm going to talk about this shaft as we can see here. We had this example shaft, shaft coupling and another shaft here. This shaft at left hand side is the same as that shaft at right hand side. Just today I'm going to talk more detail about this shaft. Needed GDNT for this rotating component as shaft here. This shaft is long enough. We are going to have two axes here. As we can see here at top, in this example, we are going to have this shaft. This shaft is going to rotate. We are going to have two axes, A and B. And as we can see, we have used, let's say, run out or total run out to connect axis A to B. We are going to have this total run out and T is 0.02 AB. This common access, let's say average access. Whenever we are going to have shaft, we need to have the two smallest, let's say, circumscribed cylinders. They should be coaxial. In that manner, we are going to have this common access between, let's say, this cylinder reference A and reference B, we are going to have common access here, A, B access. As it is highlighted here, as we can see at bottom right, we are going to have this, let's say, access A here. And then for this part, we can see we are going to have this access C here. We are going to have the smallest cylinder here and the smallest cylinder here and we are going to have this common access for both of them to make, let's say, AC access. We are going to call it B here in this example. To a smaller cir circumscribed cylinder, which are coaxial, we are going to have this common access. Let's back to our example here. The same as always, we are going to say where should be datum reference if it is long enough let's say bearing area or let's say one of them should be bearing area another is let's say contact area we are going to define it as reference axis a and b whenever we are going to define this axis a and b we are going to qualify each of them and then we need to connect a and b to each other somehow here as we can see at top whenever we are going to connect this a and b we are going to use total run out in this slide i'm going to say we are going to have three common methods to connect these two axes to each other for example here at top left we are going to have this rotating component and they have the same size we are going to write two here and we are going to use positioning control without any reference plane or axis it means this axis is a here and a here it's going to say a a axis here we are going to have this tz in this manner by having these two here and positioning control we are going to connect this axis at the left hand side to the axis at the right hand side Method number two, we are going to have, let's say, A here, as we can see, at bottom left, this A axis, and let's say D axis here, we can use this positioning control to make this coaxiality between D and A. Here, at right hand side, we are going to see this, let's say, reference axis C here and reference axis D here. We are going to have this total run out 0.02 CD axis. In this manner, we are going to connect these two axes to each other. By run out, we are going to contour the surface. We cannot use any modifier. Yeah, here, number one and number two, for this part, let's say, access B, we are going to qualify it by these 
tolerance zone, we need to take care of what we are going to write here, H7, what is the fitting type for that area. And then here, as we can see, at top right, again, we are going to qualify this axis by this TZ. Here we can see at top middle, what do we have here? We are going to have this axis C here, axis D here. In order to make this connectivity between C D axis, we are going to have this total run out. And in order to contour this surface, we are going to use total run out or run out for each surface because it is rotating component. For rotating component, it is very common to use run out and total run out. In this LOL car, as we can see at bottom corner, we can see here this run out and this total run out is going to represent the wheels for this LOL car. When it is going to move, for that we need to have run out or total run out. Let's see this example. It is another rotating component. We are going to have axis A here, axis B here, and then we are going to have three threaded hole here, and then we are going to have this total run out and T is 0.1 and this modifier tangent respect to AB, this common axis between A and B, and we are going to have this profile symbol T is 0.6. A, B, and C. C is this plane. That's why we are going to use this basic dimension. We are going to control the location of this plane as it is highlighted here at bottom right. This positioning control or profile, we are going to have TZ 0.6 respect to this datum plane C. It can move in that interval. By having this total run out, we are going to control the orientation of that, the TZ is 0.1, this small TZ can move in that large TZ. This 0.1 can move in that 0.6 TZ to control the orientation of that plane. Again, let's back to this number one and number two. We are going to have to access A and B. We are going to qualify it and we are going to have two axes, let's say A, B, and then we are going to make the common axis A dash B. In this example, at top middle, we are going to have, let's say, axis A and plane B as a reference. And then we are going to use this perpendicularity to control the direction of this pin respect to plane B. Under this, we can see if you are going to write B and A, it means we are going to have this cylinder, the let's say a smaller circumscribed cylinder is going to represent the axis of this pin. But if we are going to use modifier M here, we can have this virtual boundary and then we are going to control the axis of that. We are going to have more tolerances here. Here, my plan is to highlight whenever we are going to have perpendicularity, we can have modifier. But whenever we are going to have run out or total run out, we cannot use any material condition modifier. As we can see here in number three and four, in order to control this end plate at, let's say, left hand side or right hand side in number four, we are going to have this flatness for both of them to control the fall. And then we can use run out or total run out or perpendicularity. One of these three we can use. If we are going to use perpendicularity, we can use modifier. But for total run out or run out, we are not allowed to use any modifier. And here I'm going to highlight what is the main difference between run out and total run out. As we can see here, at bottom left, if we are going to use run out for each cross section independently, we are going to control the, the orientation of that. It is run out. But for total run out, we are going to control the whole surface as it is highlighted here. The TZ is 0 0.2 and the whole surface should be in that interval. But if we are going to have run out just for that cross section, we are going to have that TZ. It depends to other T 
easy. If you are going to have a, let's say, tight tolerance zone for the size, we are going to use, let's say, run out. If you don't use tight tolerance zone for the size, it is good to use total run out. Here, number five, we have discussed about this topic in order to control coaxiality of threaded shaft. We are going to use positioning control and write this text here. And number six here at top right, again, we are going to have threaded, let's say shaft here. Again, we are going to control the coaxiality respect to AB axis as a common axis. At top middle, again, we are going to have this threaded area here in order to control the coaxiality of this respect to axis C here. We are going to use this positioning control and diameter symbol TZ0.1 and modifier for maximum material condition. And let's say, respect to C, whenever we are going to have this material, maximum material condition for C as well. For number seven and eight, for other rotating surface, we are going to use run out or total run out respect to that AB axis. Here we are going to have another example at bottom right. This component is going to rotate respect to this AB axis. AB, A, let's say B is this plane here. And we are going to control the orientation of that respect to A and B. For this part, as it is dashed line, we use just for this part, maybe this part is in contact. For that, we are going to use this, let's say, run out. As it is highlighted here, just for this part, it should be in that interval individually, because it is run out. And also for this cone shape, it is the TZ 0.2 for each cross section individually, we are going to control individually. For now, I would like to close this session. In coming session, I'm going to talk about these collective effects. And then step by step, I'm going to talk about this phalange and let's say this key assembly, key seat, key and key way. Thank you for today. I hope you enjoy it. See you next time.